Welcome everyone to Anit Kabir here in Ankara. We are of course here for the Turkish Cup 6th round 2nd leg against Ankara Guku. But before we crack on with that we do of course have some games to catch up on. And the weather behind me, although rather nice right now, is expected to get a little wintry for the game. But without further ado let's hop into Football Manager 21 and crack on with today's episode. Okay, so before we play the second leg, of course, we have the first leg to go over. And as you can see, Carranza opened the scoring with his ninth goal of the season. This was then followed up by Lassen playing it over to Gerkan, who then smashed it in the upper right-hand side for what I believe was his 14th of the season. Now, as you can see, they didn't get a single shot on target. So, we had 17 in total to their 0-9 on target to their... Zero. They didn't have any shots. 1.08 XG to absolutely none, because like I said, they didn't have any shots, so they wouldn't have an XG. Six corners to their two, ten fouls to their twenty. One yellow card to two, ninety-four percent passing. We finally got back to our passing skills, as we will say it, and eighty percent for them. It did also mean possession was sixty-six percent to thirty-four. We did have a yellow card to Lassen, which was a little disappointing on the forty-first minute but other than that it all went swimmingly our ratings as you can see were rather good as well Zugzuk got a 7.3 in goal the back line of Blackett, Kublai, Godinho and Lassen got 8 7.4, 7.7 and 7.4 respectively our central midfield of Mehmet and Emrehan got 7.6 and a 7.4 our attacking midfield of the youngsters of Eren, Thiago and Gerkan getting a 6.8, 6.9 and 7.5 respectively with Carranza getting a goal and a 7.4 up front now our substitutes as you can see miranda managed to get onto the bench don't know why i struggled with that one but one miranda managed to make his way onto the bench this time we had volcan coming on getting a 6.8 anal came on and got 6.9 we got a 6.8 out of papa and 6.9 out of sinan i don't know why but i'm really tempted to just rename him papa smurf but i will refrain at least for now so that is how the first game went. How did we get on in our second game as we headed back into the league? Okay, so the second game saw us host Hatayspor in the league. And, well, after two games without a goal, Aaron Goulier went and opened the scoring three minutes in. Now, then, for a third consecutive game, Carranza of all people, yes, he's finally got into goal scoring form. Gerkan pulls it back for him, slots it in the bottom right hand side, and like I said, three games in a row he's managed to get on the score sheet so that's lovely to see and so is all the green quite frankly as you can see zub zuck 7.6 in goal we've got 7.5 7.4 7.4 and 7.2 respectively for the back line of blackett kubele gordinho and lassen central midfield Mehmet and emrehan both got 7.1 and 7.6 respectively erin with a 7.2 on the left and a goal gerkan with a 7.3 on the right and 7.6 for Carranza up front with a goal, with Thiago being the only one not to get a green rating, but he still managed a 6.9. In terms of the bench, as you can see, Juan Miranda actually got some game time. We brought him on as a substitute. He got 6.8 in this game. I believe I brought him on for Godinho. I want to say it was Godinho I brought him on for. Gave him a bit of game time so he can get a bit of fitness. We might even use him in today's game. I haven't quite decided on that one yet. Anal came on. He had a little bit of an anal adventure. Papa Smurf came on and got 6.8 and a 6.8 for Kurt. Now, in terms of match statistics, let me just move that because that's going to bug me. In terms of match statistics, we had 15 shots to their 4, 7 on target to their 2, 1.79 xg to a 0.5, 10 corners to 4, 10 fouls to 18, 0 yellow cards, 0 yellow cards, 92% passing, down a little bit from the last game, but not too bad, it breaks our 90 level as I like to beat, compared to their 80, 64% possession to 36 
but it is of course now time to crack on with today's game the second leg against Ankara Guku so without further ado let's head on over to the tactical meeting screen and talk to Mr Jason Dobbs okay everyone we have breezy weather hail and a two degrees celsius weather for today's game we also don't have very many tickets sold as you can see 7261 tickets for a 22,000 seater stadium the good bit of news though is the pitch is in good condition so we shouldn't struggle in terms of the pitch condition although as you know from the previous episode a bit of bad weather our players don't like it they like to play in good weather but they're just going to have to deal with it here today. Now, in terms of what Jason Dodds has suggested, well, we have positive to a balanced mentality. So, you know what, we'll take him on his word. Hopefully that should pan out. High tempo, you know what, we're not going to mess with the tempo. Ease off tackles, again, not going to do that, even though there's one away from the suspension. Opposition instructions, though, these are what he would like us to do, and we're going to simply click do it and go ahead in terms of team selection well as you can see i have put miranda in the team so there's very little change we've got zubzuck in goal a back line of blackett kublai miranda and moller lassen our central midfield will be controlled by mehmet and emrihan our attacking mid is of course erin gekan and tiago in between with Carranza up front in terms of a bench we have atberg moosing godinho amet Milman, volcan anal Yusef of wise known as Papa Smurf, Sinan and Mad. So without further ado, let's crack on with this one, move on to the next screen because hopefully we should have a cup draw after this one. Hopefully we should get past this team and manage to go into the draw for the next round, which is only tomorrow, so we'll progress and do that. Unsure about the Gekam, okay, don't you question my tactics, my friend. Don't do it. We have good backups. We have some very good young backups. Gerkan, I can drop you. You're not untouchable. Nobody in this team, quite frankly, is untouchable. Zubzuk is an amazing goalkeeper, but I've looked, and we can get better goalkeepers on a free transfer. If I really want to do it, I can go upgrade the goalkeeper. The thing is, there's a better upgrade. There's a better Turkish player out there waiting till his contract runs out, and if we can make an offer for him, I'm making an offer for him. You might have already seen him. In fact, I know you've already seen him in a previous episode. You might recognize him. But I can't remember if I've told you. So look out. Just keep an eye out. I'll just give you one little clue. Euro Cup. You've seen him in European football. He's a good player. But enough rambling about that. The media have given you a lot of credit later. Go up there and put on a wave display. You know what? That's not a bad team uh, team talk. Don't know why I was going to say team shout, but that's a good team talk. We cannot allow complacency to do and do all our good. Yeah, go and treat this. Yeah, treat it like starting from scratch. Kublai, I don't know why you're demotivated. Look, it's literally motivated everyone but you, Lassen, and Zubzuk. Like, ay ay ay. Is complacency a worry ahead of this match? Well, Zera Uznir, I did warn my players about it i'm personally not worried about it but it's nice to actually tell them so just watch out you know from the foot the bursa football latest the team will take nothing for granted i can assure you of that i've already told them that take it for granted after all traveling away for the second leg are you confident of a result i am confident as long as we stick to our game plan as long as we stick to our game plan, we should win this. We are the better team. We've got a two goal advantage. Let's just go out there, perform, get a couple of goals. Nice early goal. Make it 3 0. You know, nice and comfortable. Gerkan trying to do that. Unfortunately, gives it away with his through ball to Carranza. Fortunately, though, they are just going to hoof it back to Miranda. Miranda plays it over to Kublai. I do believe I called him Juan Miranda in the previous segment when it is, of course, Jorge Miranda. But yes, these things happen. I might just abbreviate him. But for now, we have a goal. I'm getting all tied up about our youngster at the back when I should really be focusing on our left 
sided youngster with a beautiful goal in the bottom right hand side. Tiago, beautiful through ball. Aaron runs onto it and then drills it past the goalkeeper. And we've got that free goal lead. I did say a nice early goal would put us in great stead, and it has. Miranda plays it over to Kublé. Now Tiago plays it over to Aaron. Can we just break them apart? Aaron, whip one in, get a second. Come on. Get a ball across. Oh, Blackett pulls it in for Emrehan. It's poked away by the goalkeeper. Ricardo Friedrich has gone and stopped a second one going in. That definitely would have killed this tie. Emrehan whips one in. Header cannot be kept down. And it stays 1-0 in this game. Also, I put my copy at a really annoying angle. So, ooh, there we go. Try not to spill it on my keyboard whilst I'm also trying to find a cloth so I'm not banging about I would rather not bang my cup on the desk especially considering it's right below the microphone so I apologize for the like little bit of noise you might hear right now of me shuffling the cloth because you can probably hear that a little bit but it is of course to dampen the sound of me lifting my cup up and down so Enough being distracted by my coffee. We have a big game here today. This, of course, does take us to the quarterfinals, which, again, I do previously remember making the mistake of referring to this, I believe, as the quarterfinals, when, of course, it is not the next round. I'm definitely sure it's the quarterfinals, though. So, it is Gokan. Gokan on the right-hand side pulls it back for Berker. Berker's got an overlap in Terpan. Terpan, can he get across in? Oh, will Blackett make a lovely tackle? Blackett does not. The cross goes in, luckily the header goes over the bar, and Boat, Boat, that one, even, can't keep it down. So, we can breathe easily. We are in this lovely hailstone today, and we have a result so far. Seven shots on target to their three, four on, sorry, seven shots to their three, four on target to their one, 1.1 1 .1 XG to 0 0.14. Four corners apiece, five fouls to their seven, zero yellow cards apiece, 89% passing. We do need to increase that just a little bit to their 83, 55% possession to their 45. So let's head to the dressing room. As you can see, Carranza 6.9, not doing too bad. These two are having a great performance, 6.9. Again, not too bad. Great performance, doing good, doing good. Kubelay, 6.6, .6. you need to pick it up, my friend. Jorge Luis Miranda, 6.7. Could be doing better, but it's not having a bad game. 6.3 for Lassen, good game for him. And Zub Zub is also having a good one too. And Matty, lads, keep it going. Two centre-backs, pick your form up a little bit. Otherwise, Gudinho will be coming on. In fact, I might even give the other youngster a run out. Give a Amit a little run out. It's not as young now, to be honest. I think he's 25 at this stage, but... He's still relatively young, so I'm going to call him a youngster. Lovely tackle by Blackett. Unfortunately, they've kept possession in our box. Thankfully, though, Zubzuk manages to gather the ball in. And as you can see, we've got three players prime for substitutes here on the 60th minute. So we're going to do exactly that. Let's head to the tactic screen. We're going to do condition just so it makes it easier to find them. We're going to bring Volcan on for Emrehan. Carranza will come off for the Madman. And Girkan will come off for Anal. We shall have an Anal adventure. Now, we should bring our last one. Blackett, Tiago, Lassen. You know what? Blackett's a yellow card away from a suspension, I believe. So Blackett gets priority in this situation. The mailman shall head on for him. And that is our quadruple substitution here on the 60th minutes. Which should be enough. Galatasaray, as you can see, is winning 2-0 over against Kasim Pass. And speaking of Kasim Pass, they actually got a great result against Galatasaray. You know, we slipped up in the previous episode and only managed a draw against Konyaspor. Well, Galatasaray only managed to get a draw against Kasim Pass. So they've only managed to retain a five point gap on us, which is lovely to see. And I'm not sure how that developed compared to the Hate game. I'll have to double check that. I'm not sure if I remember that from prior to that or after. But I do remember they slipped up. It was 20 games apiece and they only had five points. So that was lovely to see. And I'm glad 
they managed to mess up as well because we would have been in a really bad spot if they did manage to win that game which quite frankly they should have done just like us against Conu Sport, we really should have won that one too but we performed awful quite frankly mad though with a beautiful header through to anal who gets his sixth goal of the season lovely link up play it's 2-0 4-0 on an aggregate and well they're suggesting to take off Lassen for Moosin. You know what? Risk it for the biscuit, you know? We can use a power fifth sub. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? You know, an injury? A sending off? Yeah. We don't worry about those things, do we? This is where it goes and happens. Sabo though. Sabo whips one across. They've got an injury. Didn't seem to stop him though. Moosin slides in to try and stop him and instead puts it straight past Zubzuk. Moosin, I brought you on to rest Lassen, not to score goals for the other team. I appreciate the attempt of a slide tackle. I don't appreciate you sliding into the bottom corner. Admittedly, pretty decent finish. Just wrong end of the pitch, you know? Moosin, of a goal. But it didn't bite us in the backside. We managed to win it 2-1 in the end. 4-1 on aggregate. Nice, comfortable Turkish Cup tie. We had 12 shots, 2 there, 7, 8 on target, 2 there, 3. 1.86 XG to a 1.12. 5 corners apiece, 8 fouls to their 15. 0 yellow cards, 1 yellow card, 89% passing to 84. 54% possession to 46. Goals on the 7th and 75th minute, followed by a 76th minute lovely finish by Moosin in the wrong net. As you can see, Zubzuk got 6.7, Moosin got absolutely no rating, Miranda did a decent job with a 6.9, Kublai with a 7, Mailman with a 6.7, could have done a little bit better, but that's not a disappointing bit of form at all. Mehmet, 7.2, great game from him, Volkan, 6.8, again, he did okay. The front did very good. Aaron, 7.5 was a great game. Great game from Thiago getting a 7.1, 7.3 for Anal and a goal. And Mad also getting a 7, of course. I forgot to mention Aaron also got a goal. But you can see that. You don't need me to point that detail out. Lassen, who was substituted, had an amazing game, got a 7.5. Lackett, a little bit disappointing with a 6.7, but like I said with Mailman, not too bad. 7.4 for Emery Han, 7 rating for Gerkan Demir, and Carranza with a 6.9. That, of course, means our best performer was Lassen. So, let's go head on over to the draw. First of all, we do have to talk to the team. So, I'm happy with that tie. We won the first leg, and then we went out and finished job. Quite simple. Do we have any media to talk to? Yes, we do. Zera Uzner wants to talk to us yet again. So, Julian Carranza didn't seem to have much luck in front of goal today. Why do you think that was? Well, he's scored in the past three games. It's very rare for him to score in multiple games in a row. So, considering that, I wasn't really expecting it. Although, he is our top signing, you know. We did spend a little bit of money on him. So, yeah, we did want him to get some goals. I thought he contributed enormously in sacrifice. Yeah, exactly. He sacrificed for the betterment of the team. That's what we're going with. So, let's head on out of here. I will see you fine folks when we're doing the cup draw in just a second. Okay, everyone, it is time to draw the quarterfinals and semi-finals today. The next round of the draw is the quarterfinals. Eight teams will go into the hat for the four matches to be drawn, with teams as varied as Galatasaray, Fenerbahce, Gazintep, and Jenkerb Ligi. And I'm going to stop doing this voice, because... I'm going to have no voice left if I keep doing that voice. The other teams, of course, in the draw are, of course, us. We have Trabzon Spore, Antelea Spore, Denizli Spore, and, yep, that is the eight teams that round out the quarterfinals. So, first of all, let's see who we get. So, Fenerbahce is drawn at home against Gentler Beligi. We then have Galatasaray against Gazintep. So, we've avoided the big two. I'm not sure who we want out of these. Trabzon's decent. I think Antelea Spore, then probably Denise, then Trabzon. Trabzon Spore gets 
and to layer that means we're going to get Denizlispor in the next round of the Turkish Cup which I can't complain with too much the next round will be uh, draw is the semi-finals so we've got that then we have to view the draw for the semi-finals so if we progress past Denizlispor who are we going to get in the semis well the first one is Traps and Sport or Antalya Sport. I think this is the one we want because that's going to be Fenerbahce. That's going to be Galatasaray. I think this is where we want it to be. I mean, it has become a us versus Galatasaray sort of season. So we can't complain with that too much. We're getting Galatasaray if we make it to the semis. And probably if we make it to the final, we'll be versing... Fenerbahce or Trabzonspor? I reckon Trabzonspor does have a good chance against Fenerbahce if Fenerbahce is in their bad, bad run of form. But most likely, probably a Fenerbahce final against either Uz or Galatasaray. So that is the draw for the Turkish Cup quarterfinal and semi-final. That, I believe... Ah, there we go. It's already put the cup games in. So, hmm. The away game is until the 14th. That would mean I have to play through about four games to get there. I think we do both legs. I think we might just do both legs for Denizla Spore in the cup because there's no game in between here and there which other than Siva Spore, but I don't want to do back to back games, you know. So I think we'll do Denizla Spore in the next episode and probably Denizla Spore in the episode after. If we end up coming back for the away game in the next episode, then you'll know we're only doing Denise Lus for once. But most likely, we're going to do leg one in the next episode, leg two in the following. But I thank you all for joining us. I hope you all have a lovely night and goodbye.